We look like a pack of highlighters together. Good morning, YouTube. What's up guys, I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. My idea for this video was to use the same footage that I used for my ASICS World Ekaden Challenge because that's when I used the ASICS Hyperspeed for the first time, right out of the box, 10K race day ready, and then Ruby ate all my footage so now we're going out on a second run so I can make a running montage. Thanks, Rube. So you guys already know what's going down. This is my first run impressions of the ASICS Hyperspeed and we're gonna go on a quick little 5k so let's not waste any time and let's get to the run All right, I'm back from my runs. Thanks, Ruby. And now it's time to talk all about the ASICS Hyperspeed. So this was news to me, but apparently the Hyperspeed was a shoe that used to be on the market and it was a pretty popular like road flat, racing flat type of shoe. Then for whatever reason, ASICS got rid of it. ASICS decided to bring it back and here it is for 2020. This is the kind of shoe that people used to race in before carbon fiber plated shoes took over. And as you guys know, if you saw my video from earlier in the week, I used this shoe for the ASICS World Ekaden Challenge. Side note, that was really fun. Go check out that video here. And I gotta say, I wasn't expecting much, but I was pleasantly surprised with how good this shoe felt for being so basic. I'm gonna mostly talk about how that day felt with this shoe because it was straight out of the box. And if I notice anything different from my second run, I will definitely put that in as well. Before we get started today, I do wanna let you guys know that this shoe was sent to me by ASICS. However, they're not gonna see this video before you. Running Warehouse won't see this video before you. Nobody's gonna see it before you. All of my opinions are 100% my own, including my opinion that I hate this colorway. But without any further ado, let's start with the specs of the ASICS Hyperspeed. The Hyperspeed is 6.1 ounces for a women's size 7, but for my size 10 and a half women's, this shoe came in at about 7.5 ounces. It has a 5 millimeter drop for both men and women, but the measurements are slightly different. For women, we have 22 millimeters of stack height in the heel and 17 in the forefoot. And for men, we have 21 in the heel and 16 in the forefoot. And in my opinion, the ASICS Hyperspeed is true to size. Starting with the upper of the ASICS Hyperspeed, we have a very lightweight, breathable mesh. It almost looks like two layers, which you would think would be a little bit thick, but the way they designed it is really neat in the sense that there's a lot of protection here, but you also do feel a lot of air travel through that forefoot. We really don't have very much going on here in terms of overlays. We do have some in the midfoot on both sides, just the ASICS logo. And if we head towards the back of the shoe, you do have a sturdy heel counter. Racing flat uppers usually don't hold their structure too well, 
Um, but this one here is able to maintain its breathability but keep structure, which I think is a really good benefit. One thing though that I did kind of have an issue with in this shoe's upper is the tongue. It's extremely thin. It's basically just a piece of the mesh and it's not gusseted. So getting my foot in this shoe without screwing up the tongue was a nightmare. Eventually I did get it down, but it wasn't my favorite setup. The laces are very thin and they're not stretchy at all. I was able to get somewhat of a good lockdown through the midfoot, but I think if the laces were maybe a little bit more premium, I know this is a pretty cheap shoe, which we'll get to, but maybe just a little something more, I could have gotten a better fit there, but it really wasn't anything too terrible. And like I said, a nice sturdy heel counter. I had a little bit of heel slippage in the shoe, barely anything, but just enough to feel it. So I used the last loophole here and that alleviated the problem. If you turn the shoe over this way, you'll see it does look a bit narrow here, but honestly, I know I have a narrow foot, but I was able to have a pretty roomy experience. If you have a really wide foot, you might have an issue, but I think most foot types will do just fine in the hyperspeed. But yeah, right out of the box with this shoe, I had a pretty enjoyable experience with the upper. I had no hot spots, no blisters, no irritation. They wanted it to be simple while still getting the job done, and I think they executed that pretty well here. The midsole of the A6 Hyperspeed is very unique to A6 in general. For one thing, it doesn't have gel and it doesn't have fly foam. It's not really specified what exactly they're using here in terms of foam, so I just think it's a standard EVA material. This is lower to the ground as most road flats are, but you still do get protection from this foam. And one cool thing about the midsole of the shoe is that ASICS incorporated their guide sole technology, which is basically just a technology to roll you forward in your stride. We've seen it in the Meta Racer, we saw it in the Evo Ride, and we see it now here in the Hyperspeed. I gotta be honest, when I first saw this shoe, I thought it looked a lot like the Meta Racer. Which, that shoe I thought was gonna be way too firm for me. It's very low to the ground from like what I'm used to. However, it ended up being something that I really enjoy running in. But then I thought about this shoe and how it doesn't have the flight foam that the Meta Racer does and it doesn't have a carbon plate. So what does one do when they're hesitant about a shoe? Well, they use it in a six mile race right out of the box, right? Oh, just me? I figured. But I thought that would be a perfect time to really try out this shoe and I ended up being right because I was surprised by how comfortable and how nice of a ride the shoe has underfoot. Yeah, it's really basic. There's no bells and whistles here. It's just a slab of EVA, your little guide sole technology, and that's it. But it felt smooth underfoot, and I didn't feel like I needed more cushioning underfoot towards those later miles, which I was shocked about. Maybe I'm the only one who feels this way, but I think we've grown so accustomed to having a lot of cushion underfoot because of how popular max cushion shoes are and how now racing shoes in general have tons of cushioning. Um, but you forget that you don't always need all that underfoot. And this shoe, the Hyperspeed, helped remind me that sometimes it's nice to just have a low to the ground road flat shoe that's gonna help you go fast. Now, if I ran in the hyperspeed for like, let's say a half marathon, I'm not sure if I would feel the same way. It might be a little too firm for me. Uh, and definitely for a marathon, it would be too firm. But I think for that 10K distance, this is a really nice option. It's one of those shoes where I forgot I was wearing a shoe and I could just focus on keeping my turnover solid and consistent. Now, if it had a carbon plate, could I have gone a little faster? Maybe, who knows? I don't want you guys to think I was like, wow, this is amazing, what a, what a life-changing shoe. No, I mean, it's a simple, basic shoe. But for what it was, I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna work and it's gonna work well. Would I race a 10K in the shoe again? Yeah. In terms of durability, while I'm not exactly sure what kind of foam they're using here, I'm assuming EVA, I think it'll last just about as long as any road flat would. Be like 200, 300 max miles. If we turn the shoe over, you'll see that Asics is using standard blown rubber in the outsole of the Hyperspeed. This is not their Ahar rubber. Obviously I ran on a pretty dry day, but I didn't find that this rubber suffered from not being Ahar. Because of that pattern, I think it's really able to grip onto surfaces and it gave me confidence to go fast. I wasn't worried about where I was striking on the ground and trying not to slip. I do really like that they have some flex screws here to make the ride of the shoe less stiff. Like the upper and the midsole, the outsole is just the same where Asics didn't give us their premium materials, but they also didn't skimp out and still gave us something that's gonna work and be pretty solid. So, all that said, 
How much is this shoe gonna be? This shoe's gonna be $90. Yup, 90 freaking dollars. If you're looking for a fast day shoe, but you don't wanna spend a ton of money, don't care about a carbon plate, this is your shoe. Go buy it. Well, it's not out yet, but when it's out on December 1st, you should go buy it. This shoe is simple, it's affordable, and it gives you so much that other race day shoes can give you. And I know some of you are gonna say like, oh, $90, like the shoe must be pretty cheap. Like, yeah, the price is cheap, but the materials really aren't. Like I said, we do have a few more days so the shoe is available. So once it is, I will link them down below in the description of this video. Keep in mind that will be an affiliate link with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep reviewing these shoes giving you my opinions, and hoping that one day, maybe, one running shoe brand will stop giving women hot pink shoes. A girl can dream. I think that the hyperspeed is a major bang for your buck. In a world where racing shoes and road flats have become so expensive and are quite possibly the most expensive type of shoe that you can buy, here's your $90 option. In fact, I'm looking forward to bringing this to 50 miles. Well guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the ASICS Hyperspeed. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Please stop with this color. I have some more videos for you guys next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time.